In this video, I'm going to do an InDesign demo, creating a poster that has different types of links and a little bit of work with type, just to make sure that we're hitting all the basics of InDesign. So you should have these files available, this INDD demo folder. And inside that are all the things that we're going to link, a couple extra pictures. Um, there is a PDF of what we're going to end up making, and there's a text file so that you don't have to type the small type at the bottom of the poster. So go ahead and make a copy of these files from our OneDrive space. Make sure they're somewhere on your actual computer drive. So let's take a look at what we're going to make. So I'm going to open the PDF. You can see we've got a pretty photo heavy poster. We got some type with a bit of a opacity gradient thing happening. And we've got a bit of type at the bottom, and there's this file and this file, which are the EPS links in your folder. All right, so now that I know what we're going to make, I'm going to head into InDesign, create a new document. And in my print tab, there's an 11 by 17 setting, which they call tabloid. There's a couple different names for it. Tabloid is probably the most popular one. So I'm just going to use this template because it's the page size I want, but I'm definitely going to uncheck facing pages because a poster is not a project with facing pages. My margins should be okay for a page this size. And I'm going to pretend that this is for commercial printing, so I'm going to add an eighth of an inch bleed, so 0.125 inches. And the bleed, again, is sort of that extra space that we design around the edge of the page to make sure that when something is commercially printed, those thousands of copies can be print and processed and trimmed and not have to be absolutely perfect. So it eliminates the possibility of getting that little sliver of white that we've all gotten when trying to trim a piece of paper ourselves right up against uh, an image area versus the blank page. All right, so that should do it for our page setup. So I'm going to zoom in by pressing Command Plus. There's also a magnifying tool, and if you click and drag, so I'm holding the mouse button down now, and I can zoom in and out based on my mouse movement, or you can also just click. And to move around the page, the you can use the hand tool, which just lets you pull that page around in your viewable area, or the shortcut in any tool except when you're inside a text box is to just hold the space bar down, and then you can pull your page across the screen. Obviously that doesn't work in a text box, because if you're in a text box and you hold the space bar down, you're just gonna type a bunch of spaces. I'm also gonna use Command-0, so that'll fit my whole page in the viewable area of my screen. So there's a few different ways to go about placing images. So we can click File Place, or we can press Command D, which this menu tells us is a shortcut. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna make a frame first and then place the photo in it. So I'm gonna start drawing my frame from that top left corner of the bleed all the way across to the top right corner, maybe about this high. Because in my head I already know about what proportion of the page this top picture takes up. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that frame there. And then I'll press Command D or you can do File Place. And I'm gonna navigate into the folder. And the picture I'm looking for is the DSCN 6043. So I tap my space bar so I can see it bigger. This is a picture I took of the London City Hall, which they call the Onion for fairly obvious reasons. All right, so I've, I've got that picture, so I'll click Open. And there we go. So I can see it's a little bit cropped. So I'm going to go get my direct selection tool, the white arrow. And when I hover over this image, you can see that brown frame that shows up. 
So that's telling me the actual size of the photo. So if I click and that brown border is selected, I'm now moving the content, but not that frame I drew initially. Over here in my properties panel, I can see that this photo is at 100% scale, and I can tell that it's not skewed at all. So to get more of that photo in, I'm going to start dragging from a corner. Doesn't necessarily matter which corner. And I'm going to make sure to hold the shift key. So I'm holding shift. I'm going to click and drag in on the handle. So I'm sizing that content better in the box. Okay, so I like the top because I know I'm going to have that London thing there. Um, but I, I want to see more of the foreground here. So I'm going to switch back to my direct selection tool and I need to click off of this because I have the content selected but I want to change the object's frame. So I'm just going to click off and then I can click on this again and pull the bottom down. There we go. So I'm going to zoom out to look at that whole page with command zero. Looks good. So I'm going to go on to the next thing. So looking at this, I'm going to put in this file next. So I'm going to make sure that nothing is selected. And instead of drawing a box first this time, I'm just going to do file place or command D. And let's see, the greaterlondonauthority.eps file. EPS is another vector format that's points and lines like we draw in Illustrator. It's a little more friendly for other programs that can understand vectors instead of the proprietary Adobe Illustrator format. So I'll click open on this. So when I do it this way, it's loaded on my cursor and I can just click and drag wherever I want. So I'm going to start up here about where my margins are. And you can see when you drag that it's staying in the proportion of the actual file shape inside. So I'll make it about that big. There we go. So looking back at our examples, I'm going to go ahead and do this grid of pictures since we're talking about linking graphics, and then we'll come back and do type. All right. So I'm again going to make sure that I click off and have nothing selected. And then I'm going to press Command D, or you can do File, Place. And I'm looking for this picture that ends in 6823. So I'll tap the space bar so I can see that bigger. It's one of the rooms in the Victorian Albert Museum. So the reason I want to have nothing selected when I choose to place a file this way is that the default behavior is to replace a selected item. And we're actually going to use this to our benefit soon. So you could always uncheck this, but InDesign default is set up this way, so it's a good idea to learn it that way. So I'll click OK on that, and then that photo is going to be about here-ish. And I'm just going to drag a box so that it stays in proportion, and I'm not cropping anything out. So I'm going to have a row of three of these. So I'm going to start by setting up my grid first rather than trying to place the next one and get it exactly right. It's way too tedious. In my selection tool, I'm going to hold shift to make sure when I drag a copy is going to go straight across. And I'm going to hold option to make sure that when I drag, I'm going to get copy. So I'm going to drag two copies out and InDesign will pop these little green lines up to tell me that these things are evenly spaced. So it goes off the page. That's fine. I'm going to look at my reference real quick. And I can see I have a thin margin here and a thick one here. So back in InDesign, still in my selection tool, I'm actually going to click and hold down on my mouse here. And I'm just going to drag up and anything that I hit with this selection box is going to be selected. So I'll select them like that, I'll move them over a little bit, move them up a little as well. 
and now I want to make all three smaller. So I'm definitely going to hold shift to make sure that they all stay in the proportions that they should be. And I'm also going to hold command. So command will resize the content as well as the frame. So I'm going to undo that to show you that if I only held shift, the boxes would get smaller, but not the content. And if I just held command, I could distort those very, very badly. So I'm going to hold shift to keep them in proportion, command to resize the content as well, and I'll resize them down. All right, so let's go get our second picture. So I'll click off of those and click on the middle one. And here's where we're gonna use that default replace selected behavior. So do file place or command D. And we're gonna go for this file, 6753. This is inside London's Natural History Museum. They call this the cocoon. It has a bunch of dead bugs in it. It's better than it sounds. All right, and then our third picture. So again, click the third picture, do Command D. And we're looking for this one, 2811. It's inside the British Library. All right, so that's our first row. So I'm gonna flip back to the reference. So on this row, all the pictures are evenly spaced and they're the same width as the ones above, but they're smaller and horizontal photos. So I'm gonna flip back to InDesign. I'm gonna drag and select all three of these. I'm gonna hold Shift and Option again, but this time I'm gonna drag down until I've got that evenly spaced grid. So I'm looking for this space to be even with that one. So these are still all very vertical, but I'm going to let the photos change that. So I'm going to click on the first one and do Command D. And that first one is uh, 6048. It's the Tower Bridge. And I'll click Open. And because the photo that was in there before had a specific sizing, this one is going to sort of take those attributes and fit itself inside. You also notice that when you're rolling over these that you get these little targets. This switches you to that content selection mode so I could move the photo and like crop it differently as a shortcut of going and getting the direct selection tool. So now I have a frame that's this big and a picture that's this big and I'm going to want the row to be the height of this photo. So one shortcut so one shortcut that I use a lot is selecting this frame with its partially filled image, doing a right click, going to fitting and saying fit frame to content. So this will make that blue frame snap up around the photo. All right, so looking at the next one, I'm gonna fill this image next. So I'll click on that third one, Command D or File Place. And we're looking for 6796. This is Covent Garden, which is a sort of covered marketplace type mall. There's an Apple store right over here with free Wi-Fi, which was key for me at the time. All right, and then I'm going to do that same command. So again, that's right click and fitting and fit frame to content or option command C if you want to work on your finger agility. So now that I have these two, I'm going to grab this third one. And I'm going to pull the bottom edge up until it snaps in and is the same height as the other two. So the reason I'm doing that, and you can do file place or command D again, is that our last photo here is actually a vertical photo that we're intentionally cropping off. So it's 6742, it's one of the horse guards. So not the ones at Buckingham Palace, but elsewhere. 
And then I'm going to zoom in here a bit. And I'm more interested in the horse than the person. So I'm just going to go up and crop that guy's head off. That's better. More pony, less human. All right, so I'm going to do Command-0 and zoom out. So we've got our photo grid here. Everything's looking great. We've got one more thing to place, and that's that logo in this corner. So again, I kind of know the size I want it to be. So I'm going to draw a box first. And you can pick either one of these ways that works for you in the future or on a case-by-case -case basis. Either box first or just going right for Command-D. And we'll do File Place or Command-D again. And I found this old kind of cheesy logo that is like a crown, but like outdated people. And I don't know. I thought it was cheesy. It was free. So I grabbed it. So again, this is an EPS file. It's another vector format. And we've got that down the corner. So the next thing we need to look at is the type. So we're going to do this section first. So I'm going to go back to my finder and open up this londoncopy.rtf file. And I'm going to select all this type. So I'll click in there and press Command A or Edit Select All and then do edit copy or command C, and then you can just close that out. So back in InDesign, I'm gonna start by drawing a text box. So remember in InDesign, you can't just click and type, you have to draw a box. And I'll paste that in there. So this is gonna be on a poster. Um, it's a smaller paragraph, but I don't want it to be minuscule looking. So I'm going to up the point size a little bit, add a little bit more leading. And I'm happy with that. So this could certainly take some more fussing, but that's not our main goal here. So I'm going to make sure that these two are aligned. Again, you should get that green line telling you that they're aligned. So this is sort of taking up two columns width in my layout so I can stick to the grid that I've established. So this image here I'm going to pull out so that it aligns and again hold shift and command to make it a bit bigger and because this one is kind of a bit big I want to make sure that I zoom out and I'm going to press the W key to go into preview mode. So this looks a little bit too big, even though it's following my grid. So I'm just going to let it follow the outside of that grid. And I'm going to move it up so that the top aligns. You can see that green line there. It's the top aligns with the type. So ideally, you want to, especially on something like a poster, align the bottoms as well. So my text box doesn't end where my type actually ends, it's below. So here's another time and I'm gonna use fitting. So I'm gonna right or control click on that box, go to fitting, and you can see my only option for type is fit frame to content again, that option command C. It's the exact same thing I used on the picture grid. So this snaps it up to the baseline, you'll see any descenders are gonna hang out. And now I can select these two things, and I see they're slightly different in size. So this is a little bit taller, and this may be a little different for you. That's fine if it is. I'm going to hold Shift and Command until I get that green line to tell me that they're even. And it lied to me. It's still slightly off. The other thing you can do to check is once you select two things, you should be given your align options. So I want to align the bottoms of this because that's where the type is. So I'll click align bottom. 
and then I'll see if it cooperates a little bit better on top. Yep, there's my green line. Good to go. Okay, so now I've got this type at the top that we need to do. And I'm going to go back to our reference to check that. All right, so we've got world class and this list of different things. So if you're working closely from another file, one clever thing you can do is off on the side on your artboard. Again, make sure you have nothing selected, so I just click off on the side. And I'm going to do File Place or Command D. And I'll load that on my cursor. And I'm just going to put a little copy over here so I remember the words that I'm trying to put in. So I will get my Type Tool. And I'm going to draw a box about as wide Eh, probably not as quite as wide as that London because we made our London a bit bigger. Um, so we may have to go back and address that. And in all caps, I'm going to type world class. And then I'll do edit select all or command A. And then if you have the font family Avenir that will work well for this. So I'm going to do it with Avenir Black. And then I'm going to hold Shift and press up on the type size box just so it goes by 10 points instead of 1 point. If you don't have Avenir, pick something similar, a simple, round, bold, sans serif. And I'm going to change the color to white or paper. So the reason I didn't do world class history as one box is that we want to have this gradient effect. And to apply gradient, you have to apply it to an object. So this is an object for type, and this is content. You can't apply opacity to content. It's only the whole object. So just to make sure that those words all stay in line, I'm going to hold Shift and Option. And just like I did with the photos down there, I'm going to drag a box across and type in history. And then I'll just I'll click out of that and press the W key to hide my edges. And let's I'll bump it over a little bit just to make sure that the word spaces look about the same. So then I'm going to hold shift and option. I'm going to drag a copy down. And I can double click in there. It's a shortcut to get into the type tool, type in museums, option shift drag again, double click, uh, command A or edit select all to delete what's in there, shopping, and go back and get my direct selection tool, shift option drag, double click, Select all, type in music. Uh, this time I'm going to press escape. I think I did that before and just didn't say it. Escape gets you back to your direct selection tool without having to go click. Shift, option, drag, double click, select all. Theater, spell the British way. Escape, shift, option, drag, double click. And for art, escape, shift option drag, double click, and food. So obviously we'll have to make this a little bit smaller to fit in here. So I'm just going to move this over and then I'm going to drag one of my selection boxes and make sure I hit all these sides sticking out. And I'm also going to select my world class one because I want them to all stay the same size. So now, just like I did down here, I can hold shift and command. Shift to make it stay in proportion and command to resize the content, which in this case is type. 
and then I'll resize it to about there. So now I can come in and do my opacity changes. So I'm going to click on museums and I've got opacity over here in my properties panel under appearance and I'll make that let's just say 90 and I'll make shopping 80. So again I'm doing this with my direct selection tool because opacity is only for objects it's not for content and text is content. All right, so I'm going to zoom out, did a command zero, I'm going to tap the W key, and there we have it. So that's our InDesign review slash demo. Hopefully it was a good refresher, maybe you learned a couple of new things, and you'll be ready to go on to your next assignment.